Well, good Wednesday afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. Man, it is kind of cray-cray. It's kind of cray-cray. Um, interesting. Um, it's Wednesday. It's hump day. Hope everybody's getting over their hump. It's interesting because this time next week, we'll be talking about the Cowboys and training camp. We can get beyond all of the usual minutia that's out there. But in the meantime, we're still dealing with the mindless minutia and stuff. And this is what's been crazy because I'm, I'm sick and tired of all of the crazy lists and everything else about the quarterback ratings and this, that, and the other. I know people will say, well, you're just a Dak Prescott lover. You're just going to defend him and stuff. Okay, I get it. I get it. But I want to actually just, just – I want you to just think about something for a second here because I've got uh, – they're talking about on NFL Network um, – I'm sorry, Get Up. The top 10 list. Now, last year, they had Dak Prescott at number nine. Dak Prescott had like a 66% completion percentage, had 23 TDs, uh, 15 interceptions, which was tied for the lead in the NFL, even though he missed four games with the broken thumb. Um, his rating was like a 91 and after that season, they had him at number nine, right? Engine, engine, number nine. This year, after him having 4,500 yards, a 69.1% completion percentage. Now, don't quote me on these. Some, these are coming off the top of my head. 36 TD passes, which led the NFL. Nine interceptions, which was low, 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 low in comparison to everybody else. In fact, like Jalen Hurts had 23 TDs and 15 interceptions, and he's left off the top 10. But be that as it may, his rating was a 105, 14 points higher than the year before. So you were nine last year. Somehow you were an MVP runner-up. And you're 10? You dropped? How does that happen? How do you drop a point when you literally had 13 more TDs and six less interceptions? Let's listen to this for a second, and then I'll give you some more of my, my thoughts on it after there. Thing because they're going to go through because here, here's here's what I understand. There there's a couple ways you look at it. It's kind of like statistics where it's mean, median, mode, modulation, where you can prove multiple things depending on the way that you do the, um, you know which which one of those you use with the numbers. So is this about potential? What we think of in your career that you've done? Is this about projections of where we think you're going to be this year? Is this about what you did last year? Because I got to be honest with you, and you can call me a hater, but last year Aaron Rodgers only played like five plays. And the year before that was a down year for Aaron Rodgers. He had some of the worst numbers for his career last year that he played. And then, of course, the year before that, they lost in the first round being the number one seed to San Francisco where they only scored nine points. So that kind of says, how was Aaron Rodgers like seven or eight? Same thing with Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow was injured. Justin Herbert. That's, this is another one with Justin Herbert because I don't see where you can say Justin Herbert, even if you say it's on his career, he's had one extremely great career where he had 37 TDs and then two years where he's regressed. So how do you have him like, what is he? Six. How's he six off of the performance he had last year? But let's listen in and see, because they're, they're going to give you their most underrated and overrated. Bottom of the hour, and of course, all week long, we've talked a lot about this top 10 list mm -hmm. that was voted on by NFL executives, coaches, and scouts, and compiled by our Jeremy Fowler. And the top 10 quarterbacks has gotten... A lot of mileage, a lot of a conversation. Lot of Patrick Mahomes being number one is certainly no surprise. But then you see 
some of the other names where they slot in and some of those that are missing. And it brings us to our game of quarterback superlatives this morning with that list in mind. Lewis, as we look at those rankings, which quarterback would you say is the most overrated? <laughs> well, based upon some of the guys who slid out of there last year because of the way they played and the fact that one guy didn't play last year, that being Aaron Rodgers, why is Aaron Rodgers in the top 10 right now? Is this a career achievement list? Or is it based on how guys are playing right now? Like, where is Brock Purdy? Where's Tua? Um, where's Jordan Love? Where's Kirk Cousins? These guys all had fantastic seasons last year. Fantastic. Played at a super high level. I think those guys should be on the list. Aaron Rodgers should slide down some at the present time. All right, I will accept that based upon the injury. Harry, which quarterback was underrated to you? For me, it's Dak Prescott. What he was able to do last year for the Dallas Cowboys, being a dual-threat guy, but he was top two in completion percentage, QBR, touchdowns, quarterback rating, and happened to be also mm -hmm. third in passing yards. So I'm going Dak Prescott. All right, fair enough. And then Kmart, which quarterback got mm -hmm. snubbed? Who was not in the top ten that absolutely should have been? Rini, you know I'm going to die on this hill. The disrespect of Jalen Hurts. Oh, y'all need Jaylen to stop. Hurts. Harry, y'all need to cut it out. This man was not healthy last year. I don't care what anybody tells me. I don't care what the Eagles say. He was not 100% healthy. And the same way I look at Joe Burrow, a guy that I'm very high, when he's not healthy, the Bengals are different. When he is healthy, he's an assassin. I think Jalen Hurts getting his team to a Super Bowl, I, you can't say that about a lot of quarterbacks on this list. Well, Harold. Well, and, and interestingly, <laughs> Harold. interestingly yeah. Kmart, I mean, it's an interesting comparison yeah. you make mm -hmm. because Burrow. Now, I, I want to bring up something here, too, because she's, she's ready to fall off a cliff for Jalen Hurts, and she says he was injured last year. How come nobody... Gave that to Dak when, when he had a broken thumb. I'm just curious. I'm just curious, but go on. Oh, fully got the benefit of the doubt by remaining and, at number two, uh, 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 despite uh, a season uh, in which he missed a lot of time because of injury, and even uh, when he uh, played, wasn't quite as effective. And Jalen Hurts got yeah. no benefit of no the doubt. No benefit whatsoever. After, and, and you know what this reminds me, it made me think of it. And yeah. Lewis, I brought this up yesterday. You know the, the the celebrity magazines where they say stars, mm -hmm. they're just, they're like, just us. like us? This tells me executives, coaches, and scouts are just like us in the media. They fall in love one minute, mm -hmm. and they, they just completely right. move on in the next. <laughs> a year ago at this time, Jalen Hurts was on a rocket ship yeah. to the moon, and he has a banged-up year. The coaching staff is a catastrophe. Mm -hmm. Everything, in the, And all of a sudden now, there's all these questions, and he's not even in the top ten. Do you believe Jalen Hurts recaptures the magic this year, Lewis? Hmm. Yeah, I do. I, I, I do. I, I believe he has a chance, like, if he can stay healthy. Yeah. That right now, the offensive line will be fine. It will be retooled, and it will be back to where it needs to be. The running game will be explosive. The weaponry on the perimeter is unquestioned. You know that they've got nothing but ballers, and he is a highly motivated, intrinsically individual who hears all this nonsense that's being talked about. Him. And, and you are, he, look, we're absolutely right. He was a couple series, a series away from defeating the great Patrick Mahomes, if you want to go ahead and, and frame uh, football games as quarterback versus quarterback. Joe Burrow was close, mm -hmm. you know, to winning a Super Bowl and beating Matthew Stafford, but Joe gets the benefit of the doubt and Jalen Hurts does not. You're right. It is very subjective, just like it's going to be when we talk about Josh Allen. People love to rip Josh Allen, absolutely rip him. Yeah. And for what? And should. Why do they? Because, look, executives are just like us, man. They have their biases, and they come out clearly in these kind of rankings. I, I, I will get to Josh Allen in a minute, but here's what I'll say. The, the complication of this list, and, look, Jeremy does a great job compiling it every mm -hmm. year, and as I always say, God bless him because it gives us great stuff to talk about. But there isn't a consistent reason for choosing people. So if we're exclusively saying who had the 10 best seasons last year, then I would understand Jalen Hurts falling out of it. Mm -hmm. But there is no way in the world that you would take 10 quarterbacks it's on your team it's, it's before you would take that guy. Would you agree with There's no way in the world I'm taking 10 quarterbacks to be my guy before I'm taking Jalen Hurts. Well, Hurt. here's the thing about Jalen Hurts. Health played a major part in the decline last season, right? Because mm -hmm. we know Jalen Hurts. So did coaching, yeah. Harry. So did coaching. Well, just oh, finish, Greeny. Yes. I think yeah, but, yeah, look, they, I love how they give people pass. It's based on his health. Also, I think one of the most disrespectful things a defense could do to you is blitz you over and over again and say, I know you don't have an answer. 
That's what happened to Jalen Hurts. Let's not forget the playoff game versus the mm -hmm. Tampa Bay Buccaneers when Ty Bowles sent cover zero, which means I'm, I'm blitzing everyone. I'm leaving all my corners and safeties on the island. And, and we believe that you can't get it done in the pass game. That's one of the most disrespectful things you can do to a quarterback. So I, I can't ignore mm -hmm. that when it comes to Jalen Hurts being on this list in the top mm -hmm. 10. Because if you can't defeat the blitz as a quarterback, what chance yeah. do you have to win a football game? Oh. Was he Dang. healthy last year? No. Right. That's, and, 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 but, you gotta, but do you have to be healthy is to his understand job? where the blitz is coming from? So and, teach, oh. teach us some football. Is it his job to have a plan against the Blitz, or is it the team's job, the coaching staff's job, to have a plan against the Blitz? To because adjust that's, at, at halftime. I think it's collect. I think it's collectively. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because y'all are forgetting now. I played with Matt Ryan, right? Who mm -hmm. would have those extra meetings with us before our offensive meeting with Tony Gonzalez, Julio Jones, and Roddy White. Hey, this is what I'm thinking against this Blitz. I want y'all to do this so we can be on the same page. So I, I don't think it's just coaches. I mm -hmm. think collectively, it's a quarterback. Yeah and a coach working together for the best common goal yeah. versus the blitz. I, I don't want to put words in your mouth. I want to make sure I'm understanding what you're saying. You have some questions about Jalen Hurts, as, as obviously I a lot of executives he do. Be. He had, yeah. his rise was meteoric, spectacular, and unquestioned. But you have some questions about his ability to remain at an absolute elite level quarterback. I think the only question I have for Jalen Hurts is, is he going to be able in 2024-25 defeat the blitz? Because it's coming. That, that was the M.O. last season, and teams are going to throw that at him. So can Kellen Moore and, and Jalen Hurts work together yep. to be able to defeat what's going I'm to be coming in 2024? Because I bet it's no don't. secret anymore. But clearly, the overwhelming majority of people ha have a very high regard of Josh Allen. But here's Overrated. what Lewis was talking about. One unnamed NFL executive said one of the more overrated there players in overrated. the NFL. Overrated. Immense talent, but he makes a lot of mistakes. He's underdeveloped at winning at the line of scrimmage, tends to lock onto targets, more of a thrower than precision passer, forces throws into traffic. Lewis Riddick, I want to do a two-part question to you. Let's start with the first. Do you believe that Josh Allen is one of the more overrated players in the NFL? Yes. No. No. No, I don't. And I, and I think that underdeveloped at the line of scrimmage is such a – irresponsible thing to say irresponsible. For, especially if that's a front office executive unless he has someone in the Buffalo Bills coaching you know coaching staff on the Buffalo Bills coaching staff in the meeting rooms or on the headset with Josh Allen every day you know and he is telling this executive you know what Josh isn't able to really be able to decipher what's happening pre-snap and make post-snap adjustments and get us in the good plays and not throw the ball in the coverage unless he has someone telling him that explicitly that is such like an irresponsible, it's a typical, I, I would like to say I've heard this in my day. It's a typical kind of like, it's typical scouting jargon when you kind of mm -hmm. like just don't like a player uh -huh. and you're not quite mm -hmm. sure why he's making some of the decisions he is. So you just kind of like haphazardly say, you know what, he's just not that smart at the line of scrimmage. He oh. locks in on wide receivers. Well, no crap he locks in on wide receivers sometimes. <laughs> sometimes he looks at the guy because the guy's coming open, and he throws it to, like, one num wide receiver number one. So it makes sense. It's like every play, he doesn't have to find the fifth option in order for you to believe that he doesn't lock in on number one wide receivers. See, th this kind of nonsense here, without a guy saying, hey, look, why don't you show me the film that you watched and tell Ooh, me how you came to this conclusion? This spicy. is why this kind of stuff, like, God, this doesn't mean anything to me. This doesn't mean anything to me at all. Josh Allen... I can tell you this. I know teams like the Kansas City Chiefs, right? When they went up to Buffalo and played Kansas City, they were scared to death of Josh because of just how physically imposing he is and how he can right, make I'm, up. I'm going to leave it right there. So, you know, it's <laughs> controversy all over the place with this list. And um, I'm just pointing out that I don't see how you go from nine <laughs> with terrible numbers to 10 with great ones. Nobody's going to be happy with this except the person who came out with the list because controversy sells. All right, good people, I got to get ready for Dan Salio, and it'll be. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? <laughs> Peace. <laughs>